to the Love in Dubai Before Brunch podcast. I'm Caitlin. I'm Casey. And we are your definitive inside track to anything and everything that's happening in and around Dubai. And we are with you every Friday morning in the beautiful hour before brunch starts. Good morning, Casey. Good morning, Caitlin. And happy Friday. And happy new year. And Merry Christmas. And (laughs) good greetings for the rest of the year. I want to know when it's acceptable to not have to say Happy New Year anymore. Sometimes you just use it in an email just to like break the silence. But will we be doing that in February, March and April? No, but just for like a week or two. Someone actually sent an email to our office. It was like Happy New Year, blah, 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 which I thought was kind of funny. And wrote blah, blah, blah. It wrote blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. So uh, you walked in this morning a bit distraught. Something would, would we say distraught? <laughs> Dramatic? I mean, there was breaking news last night and singletons all over the world are distraught. I'm not, I don't know if no, I, I feel like this is a, an especially big issue for Dubai. So let's talk about the news. Tinder went down, but not fully in Dubai. So all over the US, all over Europe, matches were deleted, conversations were deleted. And what? Yes. Conversations were deleted. In Dubai, oh. conversations were deleted, but your matches weren't. So it was still there. You could still find the guy, but you couldn't continue your conversation. But yeah, so people all over the internet were getting onto Twitter, giving out, because if you're in the middle of a cute conversation and he hasn't asked for your number and you haven't asked for his and you lose the match, people were... Nightmare. Yeah. Imagine if you have banter and it's just at that point where someone's going to ask to move it over to WhatsApp and boom, gone. Yeah, or they never will, which is sometimes the problem too, right? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's good when those conversations are gone. But don't worry, guys, it's back up and running. And the conversations in Dubai were gone for like an hour or two, I'm not sure. It was bigger news in the US and States, but I think Tinder got their stuff together and... Sorted it out. Yeah, but it's so funny, like if you go on to Twitter, people are like, why can't I find my Tinderella? People are saying that they lost a thousand matches. I'm like, wow, how do you have a thousand matches? I have about that, but I think it's just from like a long time of doing it and not talking to them. Interesting. Do you ever like go through Tinder and just see the same people over and over again? Yeah, and <laughs> they're, they're also work? on every other app because I went on to Bumble and they're all, it's the same guys. Dubai is so small. I don't think that would happen in any other city, but I think we're seeing the same people on the same app. So I kind of just limit, I just do Tinder. Yeah, because you do, there is a lot of crossover because everyone's on, and I think happen, or is that died off now? I think it's still there. It's so funny because you're, maybe you have like this like false sense of hope on another app and then it just doesn't come through. I hope there's one fresh one on there or something. <laughs> fresh one. <laughs> fresh off the boat. I think it uh, speaks to how tired the dating pool in Dubai is. I don't like dates. I don't like dating. I don't like dating apps. I don't like dating apps. I don't like going on dates. I don't like any of that. So it's going to be tricky to I'm very someone. lazy. <laughs> I'd rather sit at home and watch TV or play basketball or go to the gym or go out with my friends than sit at an awkward date in an average restaurant and, and average make restaurant. that small talk about like, so how long have you been here and what do you do? Oh, that must be interesting. But there's so much to say for dating app before you had to go out. Sure, you don't like going to bars. How, how are you meeting people five, ten years ago? For dating apps, it is an amazing way to be sitting on your couch and connecting with people and finding yourself a date. But I think that everyone always thinks there's something better like I think people are more inclined to settle before dating apps and and when I say apps I also settle. include the websites because they used to be like um uh, Oasis was in Australia I'm not sure where else and uh OkCupid and Plenty of Fish uh, but before that you had to meet people organically so yeah. maybe I feel like there's an element of it makes it easier for people to play the dating game with the apps because there's more choice and also you're kind of always looking over the person's shoulder for the next person coming along yeah sure for example let's say you lost all your matches last night this is a cute guy whatever you liked about him caught your attention but if he decides to not respond or or you lose the match you just go on to the next one you're so used to so many conversations coming and going you're not exactly caught to one yeah it's like to quote ariana grande thank you next there you go (laughs) we were talking about tinder hacks things that kind of help your tinder game but i just find there's so many things i don't like and then what (laughs) okay so one for guys and i'm sure it's for girls as well when guys use snapchat filters oh guys using do you see those when they have the flower rings no oh there's a few especially here why would a guy have a flower ring because he likes the look of himself with it i'm sure girls do it because i see on guys profiles girls with snapchat filters swipe left or something like that Oh wait, girls with Snapchat filters swipe left. So no, swipe no. Yeah, so why would they use that? 
they've put that in their bio so that any girls with Snapchat filters, they're like, don't even match with me. Yeah, okay, but then why are some guys using them? Also selfies, when guys have selfies. Maybe they don't have any friends to take their photos. Bumble's got a feature now where you have your height in there. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of guys have their height and they're like, for anyone who asks. So I imagine <laughs> yeah. everyone asks. <laughs> well, that's you see that in lots of bios as well. I guess uh, because the... Uh, a large portion of single cabin crew and cabin crew there's a minimum height requirement so they're quite tall okay so they'd always ask i guess if you're going to be just blunt and straight up but like what a question is that is that like the lead-in question what height are you maybe no it wouldn't be it wouldn't be off the bat one of my best friends she's six foot so she's like anyone under six foot she's like nah because she's so tall she doesn't want to be with her i think you could always tell you think that but you can't <laughs> Okay. Someone actually asked me and I was like, why? Why do you think? He was like, you look tall. I was like, is that an issue? I think you look tall. But I'm 5'8". Mm, That's reasonably tall. And in Dubai that is tall. Yeah, well, I'm the global average for a woman, which is 166 centimetres at global average. And that is considered tall here. Sometimes in Dubai I feel like that's the same for men too. <laughs> <laughs> um, back to Tinder hacks. Do you have any that you've tried and tested? Not really. I, I have read up on it. Uh, have you seen, is it Tinder or Bumble has this smart photo feature now? Where it yeah, puts yeah, Tinder has it, I think. most successful picture at the start. Is that something that everyone uses? I don't know why you wouldn't. You choose your own for certain reasons, maybe. So uh, I've had male friends go through my profile and give me feedback. Um, don't Interesting. Ha don't have any pictures with males, whether they're related or not. You always have one of your face without like being too far away or with that without sunnies on so they can see what your face looks like have a full body one so they can see because a lot oh of people God. crop very carefully yeah and uh, guys do this too they it's all from like the the shoulders up it's no. so funny because these these are all f feedback from your friends which is funny but then also when you look at profiles you're kind of thinking the same thing like if you see a guy surrounded by women in a nightclub you're like mm, i'm not sure if you're a guy i want to date yeah, especially because you go to nightclubs all the time and you pack a women around you. Like, What does it mean that he thinks it's important to show that he can have women wrapped around him? I find it really annoying when there's three photos and it's two guys in every photo or a group of guys in every photo. It's like, have one on your own. Oh, yeah, especially if it's like the whole way through. Yeah, and it's the same two guys, so you don't know which of the two it is. But then sometimes... It's always a less attractive one. But then... But then <laughs> That's so true. But then it's funny because you either have a picture by yourself, which I think sometimes can look super posy, or you're with your friends. So there's no winning. This is, I think this is always the problem for me with dating app. There's no winning. The whole thing is quite vain. You're just yeah, choosing people based on... it's completely superficial. Yeah. But how else are you going to do it? What are you going to have like... Um, here's this profession and here's this sense of humor and swipe through text. Yeah, there's no, there's no way to do it well. But basically. I think photos, it's not just the looks that jump out at you. It's what photos they've chosen to include. Like I like ones where there's some sporty elements to it. Different choices indicate different things about people's personality, I think. Agreed. Sporty element or maybe if you have a dog, an animal is oh, definitely... Oh yeah, dogs always get it right. And it's conversation starters. So if it's a dog or if it's a family or if it's a traveling picture, that's always a conversation starter. So what about for girls? Maybe we should get a guy on the show to give us some tips for girls when we're tell telling guys. Maybe girls should be putting their height so guys know how tall they are. But if you choose to put your height and you don't, and that's the only thing you choose, like what's... What that's that not the only you? thing. One another thing I really hate is car pictures. Guys posing beside cars. I hate when guys are in the car taking a selfie when they're clearly driving. That's wrong it's for more war. reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think especially here, it's such a showy lifestyle. And I think guys think that it's important to show off this kind of stupid like crazy lifestyle clubbing partying cars do you ever see ones with tigers like that actually happens oh, yeah that's rough it's usually that's in the tiger temple though in uh is it thailand yeah and skydiving they love a skydiving photo oh i haven't I don't it's like a drugged up much. tiger there's the skydiving picture and then there's one with six people in it on oh, the gym selfie gyms oh, gym I mean, selfie <laughs> guys who have their shirts off just to show off their six pack man i'm like no should we move on to our next story? Uh, let's have a break. Up next, we're going to be talking about... It's more kind of dating-related stuff, isn't it? Yeah, and this is something else that has divided the internet in Dubai over the last few days. Oh, stay tuned. So 
So just a quick one before we move on. I've found some Tinder hacks that might actually be useful. Apparently you get punished if you're too picky or too not picky. Okay, what do you mean by punished? So Tinder has an algorithm like Facebook, Instagram, every social media app kind of has an algorithm for where you're placed in people's queues. So uh, Tinder has one of these. Uh, It's calculated by an ELO score uh, and it ranks you in terms of likability. So you'll get kind of put to the front if you're more active more frequently and you're not too picky but not too matchy. Oh, not too matchy. So if you're really genuinely looking for love and you're open to everyone, you're going to get downgraded first? Yes. So uh, just, I've got an article here and it says if you're overzealous and swipe right on... <laughs> overzealous, what a word. And swipe right on everyone, Tinder won't show you to as many people. Okay. But I guess like when you're on Tinder, you could swipe a hundred times a minute. There's definitely guys who do that. They just swipe uh, right to everyone and then see who matches with them and then go through and pick who they want to talk to. So I guess that's a way of kind of showing the showing how serious people are. Because if you're doing that, you're obviously not... Yeah, you're just going through you're all of them. You're just going through all of them. And then if you're... Well, is there a problem with being really, really picky? Well, it's not a problem. It's just you're not going to get put to the front of the queue because you're not going to match. And I guess Tinder deems success as a match, right? Yeah. But I guess unless you buy Tinder Gold and then you can choose to be put to the front of the queue. Well, this is um, this is the other thing that mentioned. It said uh, Tinder Gold supersedes this, so you don't have to go through the algorithm and you get put to the front of the queue. So you can pay or you can do it yourself organically. Yeah, I reckon... Depends how desperate you are. I reckon with all of these... <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it makes a huge difference. Like, as a, as a hack, I reckon, work more on your profile rather than how many times you're swiping left or right. Another um, article said that you should treat your bio like an advertisement for yourself. So rather than kind of waffle on or be like, no one reads this anyway, have like a quick uh, blurb, like a sell. Yeah. And with Tinder, if people have a quick short sell and it's funny, it's fine. But it's so hard to be unique that it's kind of sometimes it can just come off as cringy. It's good, though, if you have an icebreaker in there. So if you go, like, I have a big dog... Uh, if you come uh, visit my dog finish that sentence <laughs> just so you know I have a dog and I love him very much is it yeah, yeah. It, it, gives, it breaks the tension and it's not like how's your Saturday going you know what as tinder hacks we should actually find the bios that are interesting and then just copy and paste them for everyone to see and be like these are good ones to use okay done we'll do that done. on love in Dubai and we'll talk about that next month so speaking of dating there's been a an interesting online debate yeah, so this week, do you know Anas Bukash? Yes, he's an Emirati influencer. He's quite well known, isn't he? Gets yeah. out and about. He does, and he does these kind of daily questions, and he posts them on his Instagram. A couple of days ago, the video posted is getting a lot of comments, both negative and positive, because the question is, who pays? And he's kind of talking about dates. Um, because he started off by saying, historically, years ago, the men would traditionally pay, because, I guess, women were at home and men were out working and this was years Hunters, ago back, gatherers. back in the year dot now things have changed women men earning similar amounts who pays we're still 30 percent earning 30 percent less than men well Just putting I th- it out there i think that actually that's later on in life i think in our 20s 30s women and men are kind of even keel and then the pay divide widens well it's a average anyway so a lot of women but uh Go on maternity leave and things and then it's a whole other conversation. (laughs) That's a whole whole other topic. So uh, it comes up and I think the reason there's such a divide in the comments is because some people are talking about marriage, some are talking about first dates and so I just don't think it's black or white. It's not, but that's the point, isn't it, to spark that debate. But let's talk about it from a dating kind of perspective because we have no insight into marriage. So do you think men should pay on a date? Would you be put off if a guy was like, you pay? I think it always depends on the situation. So has he suggested the place or have I invited him? Like if I'm inviting, if me and my friend go out for lunch, we split it. But then if I invited her to a nice restaurant, I would pay because I was like treating her and I had chose the restaurant. So if you're on Tinder and you say, hey, do you want to go out for dinner on Thursday night? Would you pay? So if I put it out there and asked him, I feel like I would clearly be more keen. And in that case, I would pay. However, would if you pay for him or just pay half or pay for yours? 
if I invited a guy, you're naming the restaurants in terms of like price or whatever, you know how much it costs and you know what it's going to be like. So maybe there is more responsibility on you to understand how much the bill will cost. But then flip the situation. If I'm on the date, I always split it, try and split it. Some guys don't like it when you try and pay though. They like that you pretend to try and pay. But if you actually try and pay, they don't like that. Why not? I don't know. Maybe they feel emasculated or something. I think it totally depends. Like, it, So it's a first date or a third date. It's nice if there is a balance. Like, so we've talked about it before. Like if the guy pays for the date and then you get the drinks or you pay for the date, then he gets the drinks. Or then, yeah, if it's the next date, then you pay and take turns or something like that. Yeah. But honestly, mm-hmm. would you be a little bit put off if a guy like didn't offer to pay for you i get really awkward at the bill time yeah me too and then and then i usually fight to pay half one time a guy went to the bathroom and i paid for the bill oh that's awkward (laughs) because because he went at bill time so i was like oh maybe maybe did you ever hear from him again well we went for drinks that night after and then he paid for them so it was like evened out what have the comments on the anaspu cash conversation what what's been the back and forth okay so i'll just read out a couple so you can kind of get the the gist of what's going on uh number one i don't see i see that as long as a guy can afford to do it then he's responsible for it that's a bit traditionalist next one the man always pays my husband is very chivalrous and i pray that my daughter marries a man like him that's nice but it's about expectation i think right Mm -hmm. the next one says it depends on income which i think this is kind of when you go when you're married yeah. and then it's balance so depending on who's earning what it's not always black or white this person says we can all share we are human simple as that isn't the point of marriage that you kind of merge your assets and your money and your finances so then it's not your money it's our money yeah so the person who's earning more will probably take the brunt of the bill it always depends on the marriage though because i see some people do separate finances yeah my friends are married and they're still quite like they have their grocery bill and stuff because they have separate accounts. So it all changes. Okay, let's see what else. I would go with the modern way. We share the bills, must be equal. It's unfair to have one person do everything. Yes, it's nice being pampered and get a lot of gifts and whatever, but we must never be selfish. We must think about the other person's feelings. This is my opinion, smiley face. So <laughs> I had a lot of issues with my ex-boyfriend uh, because I earned quite a bit, about 50% more than him. And he was on commission, but slow months, it was 50% more. And... I wanted to go out places and he couldn't really afford it. And I was like, it's fine, I'll pay. And he found that really emasculating. Like it was a really big issue in the relationship because he, even if um, I was going out for a work thing that was paid for, he'd feel like I was trying to trick him and being like, no, you're paying and you're just telling me it's free. Uh, And then when I'd offer to pay and then there was that fight of like, but I want to go somewhere nice and I'll, I'll pay and he goes well I can't afford that and I don't want you to pay so I'm not going to come and it's like but I want you to come with me so it was really difficult it kind of was one of the it broke the relationship it was just his personality and the way he was brought up he just thought he should be providing and should be doing that stuff and so it was difficult to have that kind of female person going no no I'll pay and he's like no maybe he just didn't like going out and and it's a possibility that sometimes it could be looked as like frivolous going out spending and he'd rather just staying in no he wasn't like that because when he had money he wanted to splash it a lot hmm okay so (laughs) that's a tricky one and I feel like that could have been that's money can be such an uncomfortable topic especially for young couples like obviously that's what you guys were and the kind of spend on a date is can be quite a tricky thing if someone wants to go out and spend a lot or a little um or like I was saying maybe people just don't want to go out at all well, it's a, I think it's an ongoing relationship issue. Even my parents, my mom's a bit thriftier and my dad's more splash the cash. And so she kind of sometimes has to reel him in and he sometimes has to encourage her to be a bit more frivolous. So I think it's, um, I, I think it's an ongoing thing that you always have to balance in life. Yeah, I reckon you learn your balance and you learn who's the spender, who's the saver. But at the start, it, it can be... Because you don't want to talk about money at the start of a relationship. Yeah, it's, it's hard enough when someone goes to the toilet and who pays the bill. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, you were telling me on another note about something very exciting happening at Dubai Mall. Uh, yes, on Wednesday night, Charlotte Tilbury, the makeup artist from the UK. So she launched in Dubai last year. However, she's got a really exciting launch for, you know, Pillow Talk. 
This is a product line. So Pillow Talk is the famous shade that everyone was obsessed with for lip liner and lipstick. And what she's done is brought out a blusher and a palette to go with it. So it's super exciting because Pillow Talk is kind of a shade that can suit all, it suited all lip colours. It's like Huda's Trophy Wife. What's the Trophy Wife? Uh, it's a Huda Beauty lip stain that everyone loves. It was like the OG, I think, of Huda's lip stains. What she's done is there's this massive pop-up at the Dubai Fountains and it looks like a carnival for makeup lovers. Like, it's amazing. So you go in, I think it's open to the public this weekend and it's there until January 19th. You can get your makeup done by professionals who've flown in from Selfridges in the UK where they work with Charlotte daily, weekly. Um, That's where she's based. She came last year when she was launching. I think, did you see her? Yes. uh, She, when her Dubai Mall store opened, uh, she had a party and yeah, she's lovely. And so she's got this uh, activation happening and do you get free stuff? So you can play games, you can play like different types of carnival games, like a whack, you remember whack-a-mole? Yeah. Or what's that strong-armed one, the one that you have to whack really hard and the higher you get. So if you get up to 120, then you get a product. It's amazing. Oh, nice. Yes. And then they, they also have like the carnival arm. Now, I like this, the claw. The claw. Nestled among the lip cushions are boxes of the magic cream. It was really tricky. This sounds amazing. Yeah. So they, there's four or five different games and then you can actually go to the top of the little carnival wonderland and I'd lie down into like an area of cushions and feathers and take a picture. So it's Instagram goals. Oh man. It's like, <laughs> because it's, Charlotte does things so well. She does launches and products so well and everything just looks beautiful. Like you just want to be in it she's very uh like signature is kind of pink and rose gold too yeah. so it's very girly and a lot of fun her store in dubai mall just i would i don't know what i would do to just live there <laughs> i just love it i so love her speaking of living at malls uh it's dsf this month which yep. i think is the biggest thing happening in january it's uh events wise has calmed down but dsf is absolutely going off I know. I mean, I think we had two we, two months of November, December. We thought things were going wild. We thought we would have a break in January, but no, it's gone the other way and people are just shopping, there's, shopping. Um, there's a lot happening at MOE, uh, Mall of the Emirates. Uh, sales of up to 80%. They're doing a lot of uh, giveaways too, where you can win 15 times the value of your spend. Uh, and there's live entertainment performances uh, for the kids as well. Uh, and of course they've got their incredible hands-free shopping service which is lovely yeah it's pretty much everything you can shop till you drop you can win big prizes and then the kids can go and be entertained i think they even have like gaming units as well so gamers i don't know the whole family can basically be entertained in all of the emirates for the next month so you can just live there you can just live there oh well yeah no charlotte tilbury but sephora will do Uh, on that note, we will wrap up there as it's almost brunch time. But have a fantastic Friday, everyone. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll talk to you when Caitlin is back from Japan. I'll see you then. <laughs>